Welcome back to Candy's Classic Game Shrine, everyone. Today on Tinker Time DIY, I'm going to be showing you all how to install the Ben Ven LCD replacement kit for the Atari Lynx Model 2. Let's show you what you need. You'll need an Atari Lynx, about 12 or so wires, about six inches in length. For anyone wondering, this is 24 gauge wire. You will need a Phillips screwdriver, size one and size two. You will need some solder, a soldering iron, a desoldering iron if you have one. If not, braid the uh, the soldering braid will work well, and some wire trimmers that will expose the wire underneath. Oh, and of course, you'll need the uh, 3D printed frame and Ben's new screen. First step, you're going to want to remove the screws. Now, in order to remove the screws, you're going to need to remove the rubber padding here and here to expose the four screws you need to remove. You can use a spudger, or if it's worn off enough on yours, you can probably just pull it with your fingernail. Now that you've removed these two pieces here, you can then take your Phillips screwdriver and unscrew these four screws. Now you can tip it over to get the screws out. Just be careful you don't lose them. Set them aside somewhere safe. Now you're going to want to remove the battery door here. Also make sure your batteries are out. And separate the shell. So at this point, you're going to want to take your screwdriver and remove the Phillips screw that's hidden right here. Once the screw's been removed, remove the plastic piece that is in the battery compartment very gently. My screw is still in here, so just be careful. Set that side, or set that A side. Then you're going to take the motherboard and gently lift it up, but be aware there are two ribbon cables and two wires that need to be disconnected. You're going to see the ribbon cable here and then the ribbon cable here, followed by the wire for the speaker here and the speaker or the backlight wire right here. You can do that in whatever order you find easier. And the trick to get these out, most of the Atari Lynx will have a little option for you to just press down and it will release the cable on either side. That's one. And then the second one is there. And now your motherboard is free. Set that to the side for now. What we're going to be working on is removing the original screen. If any of you have worked on a Game Gear, this little setup will look a little familiar to you. Now at this point, you're going to want to remove the four screws surrounding the old screen right here. Okay, now that that has been detached, you can lift up your old screen. This is it. I love the little fluorescent tube that has, or that they have in the Lynx and the Game Gear. I find it pretty cool. So now that you're done with this, you can set it to the side and continue or you can take a moment to clean the inner lens of any dirt and debris that has gotten underneath during the years. 
At this point, we don't necessarily have to move on to the motherboard. We can actually install the screen. So what you're going to want to do is replace the old screen with the new one by taking the protective film off. Careful not to touch the screen with your fingers. And you're gonna place it face down like this, right in the center. Now we're going to take that 3D printed Lynx uh, bracket, I'm gonna call it, and you are going to place it over the existing four holes for the Lynx. You will be using the old screws in order to fasten this in place. Now make sure you don't tighten it too tight, but you do want it to be tight enough that it's secure. Once you're finished with this, now we can place this to the side and now we can start working on the motherboard. Okay, for this part, we are going to want to remove the capacitor located at L17 on your motherboard. So L17 is going to be right around here. This little blue, blue-ish, I guess, capacitor looking thing is what we need to remove. Now, if your Atari Lynx still has this copper, I guess, shielding, you are free to remove this. I will be removing this for the mod because I need to access the pins for the screen, which are right here. So in order to do that, you're going to want to heat up your soldering iron and get your soldering braid ready, or you're going to want to do what I'm going to do and heat up my soldering or desoldering iron and we will remove this. You've removed the shielding piece that's here. You're going to want to remove that capacitor that I was mentioning labeled L17. So again, this little blue piece here is L17 and when you flip over the board, it's going to be these two right here and right here that you're going to want to desolder. Okay, now that we've removed this little guy, let's see if it focuses. Not so much, we tried, whatever. Now that we're done removing L17, I recommend we grab our 12 wires and using your wire stripper, I recommend that you strip both ends of each wire so that you can have the solder applied to them. Once they've been stripped, I then recommend that you prepare each of these with a little bit of fresh solder, not only on the wires, but you're also going to want to add a little bit of solder to these connectors here. The spare at the bottom is not going to need anything because like it says, it's just a spare block. So once you have put some solder on D0 all the way to the ground, then you can move on to the motherboard and prepare the pins that will we or that we will be soldering the wires to. Now this is a little bit tricky. I'm probably going to take a picture and edit the picture so that everybody can see and then post it in editing. However, I will do my best. So we will be working with mostly these two sets of pins here, and then we will be working with one of the pins on the top here. The one over here is going to be for the backlight, and then the remainder here will be the other connections. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare the soldering points and the wires, and then we can continue. Okay, everyone, with our wires pre-soldered, our solder points pre-soldered on both the screen and the motherboard, let's begin. I'm going to start by soldering the wires to the motherboard first, and then I will be soldering them to the screen. You can do it in the opposite order, but since I have only two colored wires, it's gonna be a little bit easier for me to do it this way. Now, when you're soldering these wires, you wanna make sure that it's a strong connection 
And most importantly, you want to make sure that you're not bridging any connections by accident. Can't tell you how many times people will put things together, myself included, and not realize that there's the tiniest bit of solder touching another connection. So the first wire that I attached here is the ground wire. The next wire we'll be connecting is labeled D2, and that one is right here. The next wire we're going to be attaching is labeled D3. Let's see if zooming in will make it a little bit easier for you guys. D3 is gonna be located right next to the one that we just did. Don't mind me guys, I'm trying to solder using my non-dominant hand and not burning myself. Now after I'm done doing this, I'm gonna go back and make sure that they're secure. This is basically just so you guys can see what I'm doing. Our next wire is going to be on this bottom row of pins and that's going to be RES is how it's labeled on the screen. The one after that wire is going to be labeled D0, and that is going to be the pin directly next to the first wire on the bottom row of pins. Basically, from here on out, the pins that we'll be soldering to are all going to be next to each other, and then there will be a gap of three pins, and then this pin at the end, we're going to add a little bit of solder or connect a wire to. So as I was saying, before my brother-in-law called me and destroyed the recording I was doing, we're going to be soldering the next wire on. <sighs> I love my brother-in-law, but he has the worst timing for calling me. This following wire is going to be labeled D1. The following wire is going to be A3. The following wire that we will be adding is going to be labeled A2. The next wire will be labeled A1. And this next wire is going to be labeled CL2. And this last wire on these sets of pins is going to be labeled five volts or five V. This one will be easy to find because this one is all the way at the end here. And our last wire is going to be our backlight. And that is going to be on our second set of pins, not here, but here on the top. Okay. And now you can see that all of our wires are now soldered to the board. Now what you can do at this time, this is entirely optional, I will not be doing it. You can then take shrink wrap and you can put all of your wires in the shrink wrap to make it a little bit more neat. However, I'm not going to do that because I don't intend on ever opening this back up. So do with that what you will. Now we are then going to take the wires from here and then take these tips and connect them to the screen here. During this time, I wanna say, I recommend that you either find a way to hold this down safely or get a little bit of tape. Painter's tape is great. And just hold that down so you don't accidentally burn it with a soldering iron. Um, also, when you get around to the bottom, for me, this isn't an issue since I'm left-handed. The, the heat point will be more towards the left for me. But for those of you that are right-handed, be cautious that this ribbon cable can and will melt if you get too close or obviously touch it. There's your ground wire. The next wire, we're going to be going in order with the top pins if that makes it easier for you to follow along. 
The next wire we will be working with is labeled D2. The wire after that is going to be labeled D3. And again, be, ca be cautious that you don't accidentally bridge anything. Now the wire after that one is going to be on the very bottom and the very first wire on the bottom. And that is going to be labeled RES, which you can find towards the bottom right here. The following wire is going to be labeled D0. This following wire will be labeled D1. The following wire after that will be labeled A3. Next, we have A2. The wire after that one will be A1. This following wire is going to be labeled CL2. And this next one is 5 volts or 5V. And last but not least is going to be for backlight. For the backlight, you will find the pad all the way here. And my stupid self forgot to prepare that pad with a little bit of solder, so let's fix that. And last but not least, the backlight wire. And there you have it, folks. This is all the wiring that you will need. At this point in time, it's up to you how you would want to route your wires and neaten them up. But this is it. This is your mod. And since we've gone this far, now it's time to reassemble our links and see what we got. All right, we've completed our build. Let's turn it on and see if it works. Shadow of the Beast, all right. That's what we're gonna be trying it out on. So far, so good. I would say very successful. This is a beautiful screen. And holy cow, is this so much easier than the McWill Game Gear mod. There's also a Lynx mod by McWill too. And I imagine it's very similar to the Game Gear one. If you are not an expert at soldering and you're new to it, I would recommend getting Ben Venn's kit over the McWill screen. Both are extremely crisp. And honestly, the Ben Venn version of the kits are so much easier to install. I would say a beginner could probably do this. Whereas the McWill Game Gear and Link Screen mods, I would say is more intermediate to expert. So if you come across a Lynx that needs a new screen, hit up Ben Ven, get one of his kits. Can't really go wrong with this. This is like a brand new system now. So with that said, guys, hope you all enjoyed. And until next time, take care.